All right, hi guys, welcome again. Uh, today I want to do a uh, just a short video on some of the uh, flow of starting a Robinson R44. Okay, so I have a lot of people that ask me, you know, how do I make sure that I'm not, you know, spending too much time looking at my checklist and you know missing things that need to be done in a sequential order. And I always say the best thing you can do is sit in the helicopter and just run through the checklist without even you know starting the helicopter just run through it and pretend you're doing it and practice the procedure like anything else when you practice it gets easier so today i thought i'd do a short video on uh just the areas in the checklist when um, it's important to be step by step on the checklist and when it's important to understand the next few things in the sequence and what needs to kind of flow together so Hopefully you enjoy this video. Hopefully you learn something new and uh, we'll just get started. So first things in pretty much any helicopter is going to be making sure that your seatbelts are fastened. Uh, also your passengers, if you have any with you, that they've also fastened their seatbelts, um, that all your doors are secure and, uh, and latched. So that's all done. Next thing is going to be making sure we have fuel. So fuel valve is on in this case. All right cyclic and collective frictions off. So on the Robinson, it's uh, one, one friction on the collective. We push that forward and we can get a range there. So we're gonna look to make sure that our blades are moving as re required, which they are nicely. Friction goes back on. Pedals, nice easy range there. Make sure these hit both their stops and that uh, they're adjusted comfortably for your position. Uh, cyclic on the Robinson has a twist friction here so we just want to get it loose we don't want to twist it all the way to the stop just loosen that and like anything else we're gonna go full range I usually go forward and back left and right and then I will go full circle as well and if there's any doubt you can even take the friction off the collective and move the two of them together and everything moves nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put frictions back on the collective, make sure my cyclic is centered, left and right and forward and back. And I'll put some friction back on there. All right, next on the checklist, we have uh, pedals neutral, good. Rotor brake disengaged. Rotor brake is disengaged. The 44 will not start if the rotor brake is engaged. So if you go to press the starter button and it doesn't start, that's the first place to look right there. All right. Circuit breakers all in, so we can check over here. They are all in, good. All right, landing light is off. It is, it's right there. It is off now on the cyclic. Avionics switch, this one does not have a separate avionics switch, so that's fine. Clutch, wanna make sure that's disengaged. There again, if that's engaged, the helicopter won't start. So, important. Um, altimeter set here. Our field elevation is 194 feet, so we'll go ahead and set that right there. Excellent. Hydraulics and governor switch is on. So hydraulics on there, governor switch is on. All right. Throttle closed. We do want to make sure that we have the detent there. We can go in the detent and release it, and we know that now our, our throttle is fully closed. We never want to start the helicopter with the throttle on because it can overspeed on startup and uh, cause an issue with our fan spinning in the back. All right, next thing is always make sure the area is clear all around before you start the helicopter, which it is here. And now we're gonna go ignition to prime, then both. So here's a spot where you wanna pause and understand just a little bit about what we're doing. Um, so when we're priming the helicopter, we need to, we're gonna be injecting some fuel um, into the engine. So we need to obviously have the master on for that. We need to have mixture in to allow fuel to flow, all right? So at this point, um, the mixture is gonna go rich. Let's see, here. oh, battery strobe on, yes. Battery is strobe on there. Good. So battery is on now. We have our aux fuel pump light on right now and our alternator light on and our oil pressure light. So those three will always be on before you start the helicopter. All right, good. Now we check the area is clear. Clear to the right, clear to the left, clear all around. Excellent. And now we're gonna go mixture, prime, then both. After the, uh, so we're gonna put the mixture in at this point in order to get fuel flow to prime the engine. 
we need to have the mixture in. So mixture goes in, we have our key that has right, left, both, and prime. So we're gonna go through three clicks and then we're gonna hold it in the prime position for five seconds. One, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. Release, it goes back to the both position, which is important. And then mixture needs to come back off at this point. All right, so very important to understand that flow that when we prime the helicopter, mixture goes in, key goes to prime, gets held for five seconds, released back to both, and now the mixture is back out. Now, I just want to pause for a second and say, if you were not priming the helicopter, if the, if for instance, you're going to fire up shortly after somebody else flew, it doesn't require a prime. It's important to understand the checklist might confuse you. The mixture needs to stay out then, but we do need to put the key still to both, right? Because that's our ignition. That naturally happens when you're priming it, it will return to both. But if you just, ignore that step because you think it's for priming, then your ignition won't be on both and it won't start the helicopter. All right, so we've done that as, a, as an assembly. We put the mixture in, key to prime, release it to both, mixture is back out. All right, now we want, we're at this part where we're ready to start the engine. All right, so it says the next steps are starter engage until engine fires, mixture full rich, starter light out, we're going to see that on startup, the starter light will come on and the light should go back out. Uh, then we're going to set our engine to 50 to 60% RPM. Clutch switch engaged. Blades turning less than five seconds. Alternator switch on and oil pressure within 30 seconds. We need at least 25 PSI. And then we can put our avionics and stuff on after that. All right. So this it sounds like a lot of things, but it happens all in one sequence. And so I'm going to do the starter startup. It's going to be a little bit loud, so I won't be able to talk. But I'm going to go through the sequence in a flow. And I want you to understand that when it's time to hit the starter button, the rest of the steps need to happen in sequential order. Okay? We can't spend time looking at the checklist once we started the helicopter to realize that we need to engage the belts because that's going to be causing wear on the belts, going to be heating up the, the belts and the upper pulley and we want, we want to avoid that. So I'll go ahead and do this, this flow with you. We've done our primer already. So we're at the point we're ready to start. Always make sure our ignition is on and uh, we are ready to go. All right, so here's the flow. Starter button is gonna be switch on. Starter button is going on. guys thanks for watching i hope you found this video informative i hope that you learned something from it and uh, as always if you like it and it's uh, helpful for you give it uh, two thumbs up subscribe uh, to the rest of our videos so you can see what else is coming out soon have a great day guys and as always uh, stay safe stay safe